So the most powerful thing that I loved about Judy was its tone, because it is a sad story and it's about a difficult time in her life, but it doesn't feel like there's ever judgment. And throughout all the scenes, it's buoyed by this joy that she brings. That's a, um, that's a, that's a really interesting observation. Um, I know that Rupert's intention was to show this is not a tragic person. This is a person who was ever hopeful and joyful. For me, um, the hope was at the foundation of everything. Um, she always believed that the next thing was going to be great, and uh, always looked forward to sharing with her audiences. That's a that's a happy life, isn't it? Can't have the world's greatest entertainer out here without a drink. Frank Sinatra's here. Frank is great, but he is no Judy Garland. I had a lot of education to do in terms of the intricacies of her life. I kind of knew the bare bones version. I had seen, you know, the classics, Wizard of Oz, and I had seen her A Star is Born, which is amazing. Um, but I didn't know that much about her later life. Like, I knew that she was like one of those kids of the studio system, but I didn't quite know how much they really messed her up for life in lots of ways. There's a land that I In a lullaby. I was wondering the ways that you vocally um, changed your voice for Judy. I mean, your vibrato and your placement sounded very different. I was wondering if you could speak to that process. Um, yeah, it was really methodical. Um, I don't, I don't, um, it, well, I didn't have a belting voice and I had to learn how to build toward that and I had a lot of time to prepare, which was great because it, you know, it's like going to the gym. You have, you can't just bench press whatever, 120 pounds today. You might in six weeks, you might in six months, you might in six years. I didn't believe that, but apparently it's a real thing. Um, so I learned about that and she sings in a much lower octave, especially at this time in her life than I do. So, um, so it's just, you know, process. It was just learning how to learn how to, and then just committing to it and going, doing it every day. You're gonna love me. I'm gonna love you. They were all fun. Some took more time than others. Um, I, I, would, I would guess that Come Rain or Come Shine took a lot of time um, because there was a lot of planning on the stage and choreography on the stage and not a lot of places to breathe. <laughs> so yeah, uh, building to that song was quite a thing. I remember laughing in the car when I listened to it, thinking, you have to be kidding. <laughs> what was it like, um, your first scene with Renee in full kind of Judy regalia? Was it um, startling or? It, well, the first time I saw her, I remember being very, like not recognizing who that was. But I rarely saw her as Renee. Like I, I so much of my time was, she had gotten into makeup before I got there. She was still in makeup after I went home. So uh, it was more like, I was more shocked when I finally saw her like at our rap party come in with her blonde hair. And I was like, right, that's who you are. Uh, Cause she was sort of, she had a foot in it at all times. And so, yeah, so I got, I feel like I worked with Judy, you know? <laughs> yeah, that's magical. One of the scenes that I thought was just so powerful was um, her Judy scene with her her dinner with her fans um, as a friend of Dorothy myself I you know I found that really powerful did it did it feel especially significant and important as you were filming oh sure of course um, and Stan and Dan are fictionalized but they are meant to represent what it is that Judy meant to her audiences especially her um, gay audiences at that time because she acknowledged um, in a time where not so many did. And, um, and also just to show what she meant to her fans in general. Um, I think that she transcended and she got inside the songs and tore them apart and 
Everyone who's ever seen her sing says I felt like she was singing just to me, and that's a gift. It was one in, it's one in a million years, you know? Um, and I think that that was what Rupert was hoping to, to show with the Stan and Dan scenes, just how much she meant to her audiences. And the dreams that you dare to dream really do come true. I did find a little bit of video of him. There's like, there's a little documentary that was made of following Judy Garland around, and he comes in for a bit, and they we can see them backstage. And so I recorded that, and would listen to it a few times a day, sort of get his New Jersey accent right, and and his kind of way of moving. So, and that was really insightful. And it was cool because that video has the two of them together, so you could see their physical dynamic. Which, which was super helpful. And he wrote a book called Weep No More, My Lady. And I read a lot of, uh, Lorna Luft has a, a great biography of Judy Garland. Um, that was very helpful. Um, they both, you know, they, they differ. I don't think she was a, as big a fan of Mickey as he was of himself. <laughs> but I think what I got from his book is like he, although he maybe did some, like, was a bit ambitious or was a bit of a mover and a shaker, like, he was completely, he was devoted to her, I think, or that's what made the movie work anyway, was like that he was a true, not just a fan, but like really in love with her. And she needed help at that point in her life. And she needed like some youthful exuberance, so that's what he brought to her, you know. The kids miss you, and they also want to stay put. I'm coming back for them. You're not listening. I have someone I can rely on now. Oh! The light. So what? Do you have to be home for your mommy to put you to bed? No. On you go. I love you, Jerry. Oh, say. And I love you, too. In fact, I love this whole town.